Buenas tardes. Pasaporte. Oh, yeah. There you go. Conan O'Brien. It's O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. I'm him. <laughs> the comedian. TV host. Doing a big show in Mexico <laughs> City. Check it out. Están mandando sus mejores. You can step on the line, sir. Ah, uh, okay. We have a new policy. Americans are subject to extreme vetting. Extreme vetting? You might just be one of those bad hombres. Okay. Look, I see what you're doing, all right? We got some new people running in the United States, and that's created some tension between our countries. But you can't lump all Americans into one group. It's not fair. Stereotyping. Este güey sí que es comediante. Bienvenido a México. Gracias. Thank you so much. I'll, uh, that's just my easy part. Okay, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. I wasn't sure if you guys would have good Mexican food. I stayed there like 15 years ago, okay? And I stole the towel. <laughs> that is yours to keep, and I'll just see myself through the border. This is a great, great gate. <laughs> Bye-bye. Of course. Live. Hey everybody, welcome to the Coded Made in Mexico live Q&A. That's right. I know I'm, I know what you're about to say. Go ahead, say it. You're way too loud. You That's right. yell during these things. Uh, when Blaze sends emails to any of us, he uses at least 35 exclamation points. It's actually true. And that's also the way you talk. That's it's all, true. hey gang, woo! Okay. And I'm trying to get you to talk in a natural voice. Everyone can hear you and it's fine. Welcome to the live Q&A. Uh, yeah, YouTube, still, still, still too Still loud. creepy. You, you, Soto Voce. YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitch, hello. YouTube, uh, we, Facebook, <laughs> Twitch, we salute you. <laughs> we are here with Conan O'Brien, obviously. Uh, he has to be called caterer, Mike Sweeney, but uh, in charge of the, uh, the whole thing. Writer Jesse Gaskell, producer Frank Smiley. Uh, and all of these people instrumental in putting together the Conan Made in Mexico show, which you saw last night, I'm sure, on TBS. Or... You can watch now at teamcoco.com. Teamcoco.com if you missed it. Because right. uh, this is the show we're proudest of, of all of our travel shows. So, uh, yeah, maybe your grandmother watched it on linear, <laughs> but you get to watch it on digital anytime you like. <laughs> That's right. You know, while you and your pals are freebasing, you can be watching this That's right. on digital. Is that true, Jesse? Yeah, that's what the kids are into. Well, I'm sure they are. And if you go to teamcoco.com slash Mexico, uh, you can see the show as well as a whole bunch of other stuff that actually didn't make the show, uh, including outtakes, uh, uncut uh, remotes, of which we're going to watch one of those at 1130, uh, GIFs, and behind the scenes. Oh, all, wow. All, all that stuff. Well, let's start that's with... That's the gift that keeps on getting. That's Okay, well done. Jesse... Um, Thank you're you. a good writer. Oh my God. That wasn't good, but you're a good writer. Oh, we she should also mention that. he couldn't be with us today because he's off writing something for tonight's show that will be cut. Uh, <laughs> Jose Arroyo, instrumental in the entire process, right. also a great writer on the show. Jose and Jesse have been involved in every single travel show we've done, and they're remarkable writers. Mike Sweeney, just so I reiterate again, he's the guy who tirelessly researches these shows and edits, and they wouldn't happen without Mike Sweeney. Frank Smiley, he could live or die, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> uh, no, Frank, uh, from the very beginning, uh, was very passionate about this project and, uh, and jumped in and was a huge force of nature in helping out. And Blair, without you, we wouldn't have had all those exclamation points uh, on your different tweets. Happy to help. Yep. Uh, so the last time we, we spoke on the live Q&A, we had just gotten back from Berlin, mm -hmm. and a lot of people asked, where are you going next? Right. The answer was Mexico. Why did you choose Mexico? Uh, Mexico, because uh, clearly so much in the news, and uh, this was sort of a response to, uh, at the time, uh, there was a lot of uh, press about the rocky relationship between the new administration 
because of the campaign yes. rhetoric, building the wall, and uh, and and the Mexican people, and we just wanted to go down there and find out uh, what was going on, and just to try and make them laugh. I mean, yes. basically, that's the 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 mission on these shows is to go to these other countries, and and just make them laugh if we can, and make friends, and uh, you know, not be too strident, not be too you know, getting into the issues because there's so little, you know, we can do about that. And it feels like yeah. everyone, if you go on Twitter, everyone's yelling back and forth at each other. We try and in some way cut around that and just go places and let them laugh. And if it if that means laughing at me and I'm the uh, gringo pinata, then fine. But let's hear how they, what they have to say. Let's do comedy with them. And the Mexican people were an absolute joy. They're great improvisers. They're really funny. Everybody we ran into, I mean, we had a hard time. Everyone was great. Everyone was great. And they had a hard time cutting. We shot so much stuff that to get it into one hour was next to impossible. I can't believe we did it. There's so much extra because as improv partners, I don't know if there's anybody better than, <laughs> than the people in Mexico City. They're, hel they're hilarious and funny and they get it. And when I was out there with the bank, you know, saying, let's raise money for the wall, yeah. they got it right away. They understood what I was doing and they were fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think one of the, what are the, but you spoke to one of the greatest things about this particular show is the balance it strikes between kind of a serious message and also really hilarious remotes. I mean, the Lucha Libre thing is, is absolutely fantastic when you got in the ring and did a little Mexican wrestling. Mike, how, when you, I, I, just, when we're, when, Conan's like, we're going to go to Mexico. What is What are kind of the first steps? How do you get your arms around an entire country? I learn where Mexico is. Okay, perfect. I look at a map. <laughs> first way, map. That was south. your idea, right? It's south of here. What? It's south, the, yes. <laughs> I think Jesse came up with the uh, Crazy Rooster character. I did. For yeah. the Lucha Libre. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And Scott Chronic, the custom Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. He's put right. together. Yeah. He's a, we have an amazing costume. costume designer who will give him idea. Like, you just give him that. Yeah, idea, yeah. and he elevates. So he makes I want to give uh, in the world of costumes. I want to give Frank a quick uh, piece of credit. When it, and I think we're going to see this later on when I play soccer. Yes, a uh, football. I'm sorry, football. If you're in Mexico, <laughs> soccer. If you're in the United States and don't care about soccer <laughs> or football, uh, but um, Frank immediately said, uh, and this is how Frank talks. You'll see, but he talks like, "I got an idea. I got an idea. I don't talk like that." He, I know. But Frank came kicking down my door and he said, you're going to play, you're going to play soccer, see? And he talks like he's trying to sell you uh, a, a, a newspaper in 1928. He's like, you got to buy this paper. There's a big story about Hoover. And uh, he said, um, you're going to play soccer. And he said, and the shorts have to be way too short. So you, so you look like an idiot. And... Um, <laughs> As Scott Chronic, the costume guy, has learned, and Frank instinctively knows, uh, I have the longest legs in the world, and they're also incredibly pale and skinny, so if you can heighten that by putting me in pretty much a bikini bottom, uh, people start laughing. And uh, so good work, Frank. Yes. It's, That's called, a new... it's called cheating. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I knew Mike would like those shorts. I really did enjoy it. I think for I, people, I got a pair of for people who haven't seen the episode yet, uh, to whet your appetite, we do have a, a picture of the Lucha Libre <laughs> costume, which we're going to show right now. Uh, yes, hopefully mm. you haven't eaten. Uh, My yet. appetite is there you wet. Go. Oh, look at how pale. <laughs> it really highlights the, the chest up there. Which there was, yeah, there was no... Uh, no attempt to put makeup on any part of my body <laughs> right, exactly. for that remote, just so people could see yeah. what my wife endures every evening. <laughs> it is hard to tell where your skin no, it stops and the sallow. costume picks up. It really looks uh, uh, <laughs> looks like a, a like an albino seal that's been dead for two weeks, uh -huh. washed up on shore. Exactly. What uh, now? Uh, Tracy from YouTube asks, uh, "What did you love about making a telenovela?" So that's something else you've done. And and a theme, by the way, for all the travel shows. We've my, uh, if, all I could do for the rest of my life would be to appear in soap <laughs> operas in different countries <laughs> in a serious role, and I didn't get paid a dime, and it actually cost me money, <laughs> and I had to donate blood uh, constantly to do it, I would in a second take that deal. Yes. Uh, it's my favorite thing to do. I've appeared now in soap operas in Armenia. Yes. Uh, South Korea, mm -hmm. yes. uh, now Berlin. Mexico, Berlin, Berlin, uh, Berlin yes. and I, <coughs> I just love it. And this was my favorite one because 
um, they gave me a chance to... We seriously did ask them for a romantic scene, and they seriously said, nah, we don't see you in that situation. <laughs> they were and then they, 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 they were, were very blunt. They were artists. And then they came back and they said, you're a Mennonite cheese merchant. No joke. And so I played it straight, and I really did keep forgetting my hat, and they keep... T- and, I mean, you got to watch that. Please watch that, because it's my chance to... And the craziest thing is they have this beautiful, absolutely, one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen is in the telenovela. And at one point, I'm angry that she's not going to buy my, che- that I'm being trifled with and they have no cheese to sell. <laughs> so I'm about to leave and she puts her hand on my arm and there's a close-up and I look at her and then they cut to her like she's been struck by a bolt of lightning. <laughs> if you saw this girl and you saw me, it is the most absurd moment in the history of dramatic acting that she would feel anything for this big creep and a fake mustache. I thought, I thought she was just smelling cheese. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah she, might, she might be. But anyway, that, uh, that made me so happy. And, and, and good God, they... Didn't they say they'd bring you back? That yes, they really said they would bring me back. And you know what? If they bring my character back, oh. I will... Donate blood. Fl- I will do everything I have to do. I will fly down on my own. I'll take a bus. Whatever I have to do, I will get there and I will play that part because <laughs> I'm just, it's my obsession now. That's awesome. Yeah, and Erwin actually from Facebook just said uh, his favorite part was you forgetting the hat of the television. Yes, tele- yes. He was just every time he's dying. Yeah. Um, Jesse, uh, uh, Wheezy from Twitch asks, uh, do you think Wheezy. different Wait, Wheezy? What are all these By the way, it's Wheezy 949. <laughs> yeah. So you know, they couldn't get Wheezy. Is that from the Jeffersons? Wheezy from the Jeffersons is on Twitch cool. currently. And asks, uh, do you think different kind of jokes work for different cultures? Did you find that there was any kind of joke gap in, in when, when we went there and you were speaking to Mexican people? Well, we were wondering that. I mean, I think especially with that, the bit where Conan is asking people on the street to donate to the wall and he's offering them a brick yes. you know if they with their We're trying out his monologue jokes on the people. Yeah, yeah, I think we were concerned is this something that's going to be funny to us as sort of an outsider but is this going to translate and people were we were amazed by the by how quickly people caught on. The and, guy that uh, I mean they were smiling and saying nope, not giving you anything <laughs> and then doing funny things and yeah. some of them had a very positive message that there's that couple that says you should put love Mm-hmm. Yeah. Into the you know, and they they had a very uh, very a lot of eloquent. Were that way immediately. Al- was... Immediately, there was not. Uh, we were not confronted with anger. Uh, we were confronted with relief. There were a lot of people that were just happy that we were there, and we were putting the camera on them and letting mm-hmm. them speak. And I think what was also nice, and it's a common theme in these shows, is that I'm the immigrant. I'm the outsider. Absolutely. So I don't belong, you know. Mm. Uh, and I look, I, I, whenever I'm in these other countries, whether it's in Korea or Mexico or Armenia, I look different. I'm not part of the culture. I'm trying to participate and usually failing. And they laugh at me. And they understand, I think, that's that's where it's a good fit, mm. is that, um, you know, the, the style of comedy, I think, being kind of self-deprecating works in these other countries because they p- pretty quickly pick up on the fact that, oh, this guy doesn't have the status. They have the status. That's kind of, I think, the underlying tone, which is nice. They get to refuse me. Yes. I'm begging for money for the wall. <laughs> right. And they're in the power position of... You know, old Hell ladies, no. young kids, <laughs> dogs, they're all like, no, screw you, get out of here, which I think is really nice. That's true. And some of my favorite moments were, were from old ladies in this uh, in this show where uh, one of the old ladies is laughing at you hysterically or, again, when you were trying to get money to pay for the wall and she's just like... Yeah. Yeah, give me- she gave that beautiful speech that yes. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know what she was saying until... Uh, you speak Espanol, but until it was uh, subtitled, I was yeah. like, wow, wow, that was fantastic. You know, the, fantastic. Yeah. everyone we asked... They would turn to camera, and there's the occasional person that would just say, you know, F a certain, you know, uh, world leader. But, <laughs> to be named later. Um, but, uh, yeah. But, um, but most of them did not lead with anger. They led with, yes. hey, we're all one people. This is a misunderstanding. We're, you know, I, I, I was, and they gave these beautiful yeah. talks. And I'm talking about. 22-year-olds and Mm 82-year-olds. And uh, that was the part that made me 
um, happiest was that we were confronted not with negativity, not with skepticism, but with so much good feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, Frank, this is uh, your first travel show you were on. Yes. And you uh, you did a lot of great producing, in turn, including uh, Chef Aquiles Chavez. You're right. Yes. Uh, what were the <laughs> what did what surprised you about a uh, taking the show on the road with Conan, and how hard was it to produce something when you weren't there, and then having to immediately because we did a whole show, we did two shows, studio shows, mm -hmm. uh, when we were there. What were the challenges you found? Uh, basically, I just felt that uh, there was so much going on, it was like running on a treadmill the whole time. <laughs> yeah. That uh, at a certain point, I hit a pace and I just didn't feel it. I just it was in uh, automatic. And uh, Chavez was a professional. I, I couldn't believe how he produced me. I mean, you know, he was, he was, a, great. that guy was a pro. Yes. And, 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 uh, and we need to get him on the great. show here in LA yes. immediately. He, he so is funny. a fan. He's the best chef. It was like the best cooking segment he we've got done it. in a while. Yeah. He was, and he, it was a perfect chemistry between Conan and, and Chavez. So uh, that guy should be a regular here in Burbank. Totally. But um, no, I, I, I I, I, I didn't even come up for air until just recently. You know, <laughs> we were in an edit room, we were in a <laughs> yeah, road, we were true. in the studio, and and uh, I actually work better that way, like where I don't have time to think. Right. I just have, just have well, to do Well, what was thing. really impressive yeah, is, and this is true of uh, Mike Sweeney and uh, Frank Smiley, is that there was very little time to edit, and I think res restrictions sometimes bring out the best. I mean, there was, we shot the, we shot the remotes in Mexico City, and then had to turn around and air them in the studio because we were doing the actual taping of the show and we wanted to roll those in for that audience. Which and get... is the first time we'd ever had to do that. And we had to do it very fast. And I, we shot so much stuff, I thought, we're just screwed. There's no way we're going to get this all together. And, uh, and Sweeney and, uh, and Frank Smiley both immediately, like, we'd shoot the thing and they would disappear and stay in an edit room for 24 hours and say, okay, I've got it down to its... <laughs> and then I would look at it and I'd go like, yeah, you pretty much got yeah. everything we needed, so... And, and Jose uh, Jesse and, and Jose. Jose. Yeah, Jesse and, and Jose. Jose. Yes. Yeah. Matt, head writer Matt O'Brien came down. Matt O'Brien, the head writer, out. came down, yeah. So Matt Shaw, I just, Mike AP, what? Dave Greco, Megan Paul. No, if we mention any... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Adam, Adam, uh, Adam... Can I say one thing, too, that added to the... Uh, that relates to what Frank was saying. Frank was saying how he just, you know, was such a blur. You have to understand that at one moment we're in a soccer field, <laughs> a football field, and we're with all these uh, people, and we bring out uh, Geo, and the place goes crazy, and kids are running from all over the neighborhood, and it's this huge happening. And then the next minute, the next thing I know, it's late at night, and... <laughs> Frank and I, I'm in a white tuxedo and Frank's in a suit with a tie <laughs> and we're at a quinceanera for yes. this beautiful young uh, girl, uh, uh, Marisol, and we're like, sparklers are going off and there were dance numbers <laughs> and Frank and I, I remembered at one point, are sitting in chairs next to each other and we're part of a quinceanera in Mexico City <laughs> and both of us... It is like putting on a VR helmet. <laughs> Absolutely, it, it yes. is. Uh, and for those Very of you, I know you're not web savvy, but that's virtual <laughs> reality. Uh, but when you, but it was like putting on a VR helmet where they they just keep changing the environment constantly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you're at a telenovela, you're at a quinceanera, mm -hmm. you're here, yes. you're there, you're on the street, uh, you're in a rest, and and I don't know. I thought that to be, I find that to be. If you want to know what these travel shows are like, put on a VR helmet and then, but have it change games completely every thirty seconds. Absolutely, and and uh, along those lines, uh, uh, Kalik from Twitch asks: Was there anything in Mexico that you guys wanted to do that we didn't? Was there anything oh. kind of on the board before we went that we just kind of couldn't? I bet do? you, Frank, has, Frank well, has. Well, I, I just <laughs> the, you can see him okay, The up. most frustrating thing for me is being yeah. in a van yeah. going from place to place yeah. and going the anthropology right, uh, right. anthropology yeah. museum. Yeah. Oh, shh. Yeah. Uh, Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo's house. Yeah. You know, oh. Trotsky. Frida, there Frida, it goes. Well, first of all, I made it to the Trotsky Museum, <laughs> and I know that's that a big a question for everybody. I got my little Trotsky medallion right here. So many questions. You all know about Trotsky, but anyway. Uh, I made it to Trotsky's house, but I desperately wanted to go to the Frida Kahlo Museum, and we actually went to it, and the entire museum came out and took selfies with me, and then I said, oh. hey, 
can I just come in and look for like 30 seconds? And they went, no. <laughs> you don't have a ticket and you need to get what? to the end. And there was a line that was, and we're closing in 10 minutes, so no. And I thought, I never ask for VIP treatment ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. But I said, wait a minute. I took well, selfies with everyone in line, yes. hundreds of people security outside the Freedom Museum, yes. with the security guards, and then the people that run the museum came out and took selfies with me. And then I went, could I just take a quick peek? And they were like, no! <laughs> you will obey the rules. <laughs> so they shut me down hard. But I'll get back there. Let's go back. That's pretty hardcore. Yeah. What, were, uh, what, what were some of your favorite moments that maybe didn't make it on the air? Any, any moments? We did a lot of Facebook I, Live, which was great. You can go to our Facebook page and see a lot of large chunks of us just hanging out, which is fantastic. But anything that kind of, that didn't, that we just didn't shoot, that, that just hanging well, out? Well, I was, I mean, the quinceanera for me was such a, yeah. such a cool experience. I am so mad at my parents I didn't get one. <laughs> but really, still it was, time. it was this whole, I mean, there's a whole performance involved with it. It's not only does the girl put on the beautiful dress, but then she performed in all of these dance numbers that were choreographed with her friends that to was Michael amazing. Jackson songs. There, there, and there was yes. fireworks inside. Her father told me that she spent three months working yeah. on Jeez. all these uh, Michael Jackson songs, different numbers, and and she and she has all these guy friends, and they all did all these incredibly complicated synchronized uh, dances, kind of like a Super Bowl performance, yeah. Yeah. which is really what it was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, See, and I very spent touching. three months on my half Torah. I yeah. would much rather have worked on dance numbers. <laughs> yes, for three months. That would be that would be an incredible. You know? I remember spending puberty alone in my room. I, there was no, <laughs> the opposite. No one I talked was about on it. Dance numbers. Yeah, Just no, the, in the Catholic faith, there's not a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. there's a lot of shut up. <laughs> You're not to talk of this ever again. Exactly. It's like American Werewolf in London. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. It's happening to me. <laughs> No well, answers. Like I said before, you can see a whole bunch of great stuff that didn't make the show at teamcoco.com slash Mexico. And one of those things uh, oh. that we had to, to slice down to fit into the hour of Conan Made in Mexico that aired last night was this great remote that Frank produced with uh, Gio Dos Santos. Oh. Giovanni Dos Santos. Oh. Giovanni Dos Santos. Oh. Thank you. Uh, and we're going to watch the uncut uh, remote right now. So sit back uncut. and enjoy some very so short much. shorts. Well, it's a Sunday and I'm at Parque Pilares. This is a popular place for people to get together and play pickup games. Mexicans pride themselves on being the very best at football. Well, this gringo's here to school them. I'm going to arrive in unknown and leave a legend. Hola. Hola, how are you? Como esta, I'm fine, how are you? Do you have any questions for me about my abilities? Uh, yeah, how, how good are you? Well, I played once in summer camp, 1974. Okay, that was uh, a long time ago. Well, relatively. You know, if you're thinking about geological history, no, pretty recent. Have you ever kicked something? Uh, I did. I, uh, I kicked an old man once. And um, is he okay? Oh, he beat the shit out of me. Oh, okay. Question. Do you have oxygen in a tank? No. Guys, I feel guilty. I don't feel like I'm helping the team as much as I should. We know that. You know that? Yes. It's possible. Can I please go and get a friend to help our team? Oh, Is that OK? Please. Sure. I'll be right back. Stay right here. Plays a little bit of football. Do you know these guys? 
¿Cómo estás? ¿Todo bien? ¿Todo bien? So, you're on my team. Yes. Right? Yes. And we go against the other team and maybe we do a little better this time. Okay. What do you think? You okay with it? I'm perfect. Let's you're perfect? It. Let's do it. What's the plan? What do you want me to do? We have to give him the ball. Ah, uh, yes. Arranca el partido Giovanni Conan O'Brien en el mismo equipo. Aquí está Conan. La baja perfectamente el trazo para Giovanni. Se lleva el primero. Gio se lleva el segundo. Gio tiro gol. Gol de Giovanni Dos Santos. Asistencia de Conan. Aquí está el Barbón. Qué gran recepción del Barbón. Va para Gio. Gio para Conan. 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 Gol. What did you learn from me today when playing from football? You? Yeah. What what skills? You saw some of my tricks. What did you just what did you learn? I think your first touch. Great. First touch. My first, first touch, touch is great. Is great. Yeah. And also say... I'm agile like a cat. Yeah. El gato. <laughs> El gato. They yeah. call me El Gato. El Gato. You brought so much joy today here to everyone who plays. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have a, a jersey, Mexican jersey for you. Oh wow, look at this. Look at this. Thank you for coming to my country. Oh my god, and look at I put my name on the back. I will wear this. You have to wear it. When we play against the United States? Yes. You have to wear it. I will okay. wear this. I will wear this and I will play on your team. Do you want that? Perfect. back and just a reminder uh the best questions uh, that you guys have today will win some great swag including this amazing signed poster by uh geo and conan there we go who Frank drew that picture because it's really uh, uh that poster. I, I believe it was Larry. i want to say uh luke Larry mcgarry luke, luke mcgarry. mcgarry great job on this poster and uh some other great uh signed conan swag will be yours so keep those great questions coming and where was that park what was that uh, park? parque pilates parque pilates in mexico city that's right that's kind of a great uh a, a, well-known spot where they have pickup games yeah. of football and um the 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 young man who was the captain of my team who was sort of took the lead and spoke uh you know excellent english he was explaining to me that that's a park that's traditionally been free yeah and now um i don't know if it's the city officials are thinking of maybe making charging people to use that park oh. so we said that we would do our part to kind of uh and they, they had me sign a petition oh that's cool um to oppose that but we're going to look into at least we said we'd like to look into is there any way we can help with the movement to keep that park free because it's obviously such a cool place for everybody but absolutely let me just say when geo came out <laughs> and you saw the reaction yeah of those people that almost i i'm devoid of emotions <laughs> i lost my emotional, emotional center of my brain in an accident a long time ago but yes. i practically start to cry the cl when i see those young men respond to Geo coming out. It's their dream come true. And yes. then you start to see in the background kids running from other parts of the park and very quickly such a giant mob form that we couldn't even film the remote. It was a lot of work to extract them so that we could get back to the business. It was instantaneous. Instantaneous. Yes. There's just it was a huge mob. It's like yeah. if I showed up at uh, Flappers. <laughs> Comedy Club. Burbank Comedy Club. Burbank Comedy Club. Oh, everyone knows Flappers. Oh, sorry, sorry. You don't have to explain oh. Flappers. Kill Martin's there every half hour. Yeah, people in Ukraine. Flappers? What's Flappers? Uh, but yeah, that was really cool because it made, I mean, they'll be telling their grandkids about that. And that goalie really took it down. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that, can I just say, it was Frank's idea. That was a good so, angle. So yeah, Gio, good angle. Gio scores a goal, obviously, very quickly. And then Frank comes running out. We all think, we got it. That's the end. And Frank went, no. The end should be. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And he's got like a big pastrami on rye. How he got that in Mexico City, I don't know. And he's got a cigar out of his mouth. And he's wearing a bowler hat. He's like, no, it's got to end with Conan getting a goal. And I'm like, what? How am I going to get a goal? And he went, don't worry, we'll put the fix in. <laughs> so, so, and your I shorts are too short. Your shorts are too, too short. long. We'll and pull and so, in. that is the saddest fake goal ever. I didn't want to do it, but Frank's, Frank, is, no. his whole career has no. been making me do things. And Frank went, you got to do it. It's the ending. So, <laughs> I kicked, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, uh, a tortoise has kicked a soccer ball harder <laughs> than I did. And that poor goalie, who's really amazing, Thing, was told by Frank, you're not, you're gonna let this one through, see? So the goalie doesn't, 
he kind of moves towards the ball, <laughs> but then suddenly he's got like sickle cell anemia and he just collapses, you know? Yeah, just it's terrible. Really just I mean, so really the lamest <laughs> thing and you made it happen. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so and then proud. you put a thing in that says, Conan is lame. So you, had, <laughs> you made me do something lame, and it's then you win wrote, win. Conan's lame. Well, you Beautiful. Made a, you made a career of that. Yeah. So yeah. I know. I know. Lame. One of, one, of, one of the other great uh, moments with uh, Frank and Conan, I think, was the Lucha Libre remote where uh, Conan is in this giant getup and, and we're, Frank, I think you were trying to have Conan do more physical stuff, but Conan is not an actual wrestler in real life. And so he wanted to And we're at altitude. And we're at, yeah, we're at 6,500 feet and I'm not sleeping because right. we're working all the yes. time. And, uh, and Jeff Ross is... No, I love Jeff Ross is on the sideline, and yeah. Jeff's main role is to always say, like, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't get on that horse. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't tell a joke. It might not work. I should, I should go home right now. And uh, and Frank keeps... So the, so the, uh, the luchador... Um, was Cassandro. trying Cassandro, Cassandro yeah. was trying to get me to get a, stand on the top rung, do a third somersault, rung. third <laughs> rung, do a somersault, and like land, like tuck my head in, and if I do it just right, I won't be paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff's like, I wouldn't do it. Nope, nope, don't do it. And Frank's like, he's got to try it! <laughs> well, I also if he gets it paralyzed, happen? it's funny! <laughs> That's the story. We'll get a lot of clicks. I don't know if you were aware that the one of those wires had just broken right before you arrived. On the yeah. ring, yeah. And oh, they yeah. spent about half an hour trying to put it back. <laughs> right. on. That was a disaster. I mean, we showed up and the electricity was down. Yeah. Right. Uh, Cassandro said he was going to take an hour and a half to get made up. Right. <laughs> and then the, th the ropes broke. So <laughs> the best part down. of that remote yeah. is, in, in my opinion, that was talk about something that was not seen. There was a tiny little men's room where we changed. So well, we I changed into my I we, I changed into my costume. Andy changed into his costume. I'm dressed like a, a giant half naked rooster. Andy's dressed like a giant baby. We're in this tiny hot locker room, and we're standing there, and they're not ready for us. So Andy and I are just standing there. I think in there for about forty minutes. While these guys are futzing around, trying to figure something out. And, and at one point, I just turned and there was a mirror. And I saw myself <laughs> in this costume. And I thought about my age, uh, the fact that I have children, um, how long. And, and I just had this great moment of like leaving my body and thinking... Why? Why is why? Why is what an absurd funny. life? How is this my life? Yeah. How is this my life? And I, but I wasn't sad. It was part of me was like, "Yep." At least you weren't alone in there. No, I right, was. There. I was, I was, I was there dressed there as a big baby. Giant yeah. baby. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I have to. I have to say, it reminded me of the end of Re Requiem for a Heavyweight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> If anybody knows Look it that up, film. kids. Yes. Exactly. Requiem for Heavyweight. That's a good one. Uh, Mary, Mary Elizabeth on no, Facebook it was asked. Anthony Quinn. Mary Elizabeth oh, on Facebook asked, who came up with Andy's baby costume? Was that you, Jesse? Was it I, you I think that was Jose. Oh, that was Jose. Yeah. Because yeah. that was, and but Andy immediately just Andy comes in. Andy took two that role. Like, yeah. <laughs> Andy like was born one. to play <laughs> baby <laughs> mom. Baby mom. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, let's talk quickly about that. You know, the remotes were only one half of Mexico. The other half was the studio show with Diego Luna, President Vicente Fox, Cali Calibre 50, uh, as well as... Uh, a, a monologue in Espanol. A monologue in Espanol. And uh, uh, Chef Chavez and also uh, stand-up Sofia Nino de Rivera, which was uh, She was very good. She was yeah. great. Very good. Uh, just a shout-out to her. She's a very good uh, stand-up, and she was on the show, and we just couldn't get everything in the program, but I think her set is yep. online. Absolutely. You have to check her out. She's really funny. And I was laughing. I, w I couldn't, I, I speak some Spanish, and so she was speaking quickly, but I could kind of understand what she was saying, and I thought her set was really funny. And yeah. then later on, I had other things explained to me, but just her physicality was very funny. She's, yes. she's very good. Absolutely. And so, and, and what was it like, Did talk about out-of-body experiences, what was it like being on in this Mexican set doing a studio show. I mean, I know you worked really hard on your on your monologue. Was it that different from being here? It was uh, because we had a whole Mexican crew and all these other people. It, first of all, we cannot say enough good about the crew at Televisa. Absolutely. They were fantastic. The right. director, Lalo, so uh, the executive producer, 
And then the, yeah. these cameramen, Andrea. yeah, they, Andrea they, Salas, yeah. yeah, they did such an incredible job. They made it so easy for us. The audience was fantastic. So we didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Walked out there. There was so much goodwill. Uh, they tolerated my my attempts at, <laughs> at, at at Spanish. Yeah. And I was very pleasantly surprised at. We do this show day in and day out. Um, and we've been doing some version of this since 1993. Yeah. And so sometimes uh, when you change it up completely and you're in another country on another set speaking a different language, <laughs> it's so invigorating. People think, well, that, would that be hard? It's liberating. It's really yeah. uh, life-giving. It, it gives you all this new energy that at this stage of the game, in this stage of my career, to have an experience like that makes you feel like you're 25 and starting out again. It was really fun. That's cool. Um, Vinegar Stroked from Twitch, I'm sorry I have to say these names, I asked how did the Mezcal <laughs> Diego Luna gave you taste? I'm okay with Mezcal. It's yeah. not, I, I, love, I don't know how you guys felt. I was more, um, I was more drawn to the tequila and maybe probably some of the smoother tequilas than I am to Mezcal. I'm, and also, I'll be honest with you, I'm not... Mr. I'm, I'm not a great uh, uh, aficionado of hard liquors. Like, I'm mostly like a wine guy. I'm pretty square. I'm not someone who's like, oh, I love this whiskey. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I, uh, but I really do love a good uh, tequila. Mm -hmm. And um, we had some amazing tequila down there. Yes. Uh, which was fantastic. And the food is absolutely incredible. Yeah, did you guys, how, a lot of people are asking how spicy Team Coco went. Do you, are you guys, did you guys eat anything super spicy or anything that you just absolutely loved down there? One night we were editing and uh, the only restaurant that was open was Burger King. So <laughs> that was, I, I, I only ate out the last night because... I missed, I missed out on all the best. Oh, no. What about you? Did you have anything yeah. spicy? Yeah. We, we Why went don't you to answer the, some the, questions? Yeah. The, first night, the first night, our security guy, James, who was great, took us to this fantastic taco place, which actually... What's or, it called? James and Queen. It was uh, uh, Khal Khalifa. Khalifa, which... Uh, it was great. You Not actually went Khalifa. back to with Jorge Ramos. He I, went, I did an interview uh, with uh, Jorge Ramos, yeah. amazing journalist, terrific interviewer, and he did kind of a man on the street... Yeah. The spiciest thing I had is he took me to Khalifa and there's, he was recommending one of the least hot of the sauces or medium. And there were maybe six there. Six right? there. And I went right to DEFCON 10. <laughs> I was right. like, I want this one. Because <laughs> when I'm on camera, this. I'll do anything. If I'm <laughs> off camera, I'm like, oh, you have mayonnaise. <laughs> but when I'm on camera, I wanted the, so I put a lot of it on, on this <laughs> and, and ate it and uh, yeah, it um, it dissolved my pancreas, it was amazing. <laughs> um, this is actually, uh, this is kind of, speaking of uh, dangerous things that you'll do on camera, uh, Teleriver85 asked, uh, from Twitch asked, on the cold open, did the dog jump on Conan? And I oh. hope no biting was involved. Sweeney, you wanna answer uh, that? Did you post Great a photo? Uh, no, I didn't post it. Oh, okay. I didn't go public with it. Oh. Maybe I did. No, uh, I know you showed us. <laughs> the but. setup is uh, that we had a bunch of fine takes where yes. the dog is with chasing. A drone. A drone <laughs> with a drone. With a drone. It's very in yeah. space, and then the drone goes up. We're two hours out into the desert. It's a big shoot. They built we had a, a lot of building. great shots yes. with Someone the dog. Someone asked for one more take. I don't <laughs> Just know. One more. Was it you or was it Matt? It was Matt. Sweeney said, we need we one more. And he said, and I, he both said both it would be really good if the dog got closer. The problem is that... <laughs> the dog was coming out too late. Yes. The problem is that the person who trained the dog said, it is an attack dog, it will stop the minute, but it's trained, it'll stop the minute you stop. So when the dog gets close, stop. And then, of course, the comedy writers <laughs> said, it's funnier if you keep going and the sure. dog gets you. And you expressed concerns. You are like, I, I, the last run, I, I felt like if I keep running, it's going to attack me. Yes. So... We I, said, keep running. They said, keep running. <laughs> so, like an idiot, the take you see, I think, is the last take. Mm. I run. The At take. the very end, you see the dog jump. I'm running, and I'm just about to stop, but I let the dog catch up to me, and I didn't stop. The, jog, the dog jumps up. I'm wearing a suit, and I feel a shooting pain right here. And I know it's right here. 
because I can still feel the large clotted wound. <laughs> its claw from its paw went through my suit and punctured uh, the skin. And then I start limping back and I can see everyone coming towards me. And then I see that there's a big hole and I pull up my uh, uh, suit and there's blood running all the way down my leg. And so they come and uh, they have like Bactine, whatever, the stuff you have on a camping trip. And uh, anyway, over the next day, I bled through like four band-aids. Yeah. that just kept, oh every time gosh. I would replace it, it would bleed through. And then this massive bruise but you and felt my, a lot. And then my yeah. no. And, and then my <laughs> wife saw it. We got the tape. My wife sees me like step out of the shower, and she's like, "What the hell happened?" <laughs> and I said, "Oh, they used an attack dog." And she's like, "What?" <laughs> and I'm always coming home with something yes, yes. messed up, and she's always saying, "What happened?" And I said, "Well, we were doing something that involved a falcon holding a razor blade." Right, right, right. <laughs> right, yeah. So I still have, uh, you know. I don't think you can see it, but because yeah. I can't get my legs high enough, but I still have a healthy. Yeah, don't show. It's it's actually we actually have a shot of it in uh, the cold open BTS on the website. Do you have a oh, shot? Okay. Of it? Yeah, we okay. have okay. video of it, which is you can see how it all went down. Which is you want it actually in the cold open. Exactly. There's also uh, footage of me rubbing Alpo on your. Suit <laughs> leg. Uh, Just before <laughs> behind, yes, behind. The dog. It wasn't the dog's fault. Dog was a. Uh, Belgian Shepherd, yeah, great cool. dog, really fantastic, beautiful dog, really well trained, and he does a great take in the cold open where <laughs> I'm explaining who I am. The dog's like, Rrr. yeah. <laughs> right. I also love that, that the dog job. can read when I hold up the Trump towel. The dog's like, oh, <laughs> oh. So the dog's familiar with Trump's real estate. <laughs> right, right, exactly. It was kind of funny when we did the football remote. I remember they had to put some extra makeup on the in your inner thigh. That's how high the shorts were <laughs> because of the the dog bite. Um, did you guys? Did anybody uh, bring back any souvenirs? I know you have your Trotsky medal. Frank, did you bring back any souvenirs from Mexico? Uh, a bunch of crap for my kids, basically. <laughs> uh, but Perfect. good stuff. Good but stuff. Yeah. I went to the airport. Good we didn't crap. have time to stop. I was supposed yes. to bring back two wrestling masks for each one of my kids, and I never got a chance. So at the last second at the airport, I got tchotchkes, and they they were happy. So Where's very... Uh, this is a common theme on these trips. Yeah. People say, what did you bring home for your family? We we work up until the last second. Absolutely. And then the minute we're done with the taping, there's it's nighttime, and then we get up in the morning, and you jam all of your stuff that you've been living out of your into suitcases. Yeah. And your costumes and your weird shorts and your wrestling masks, you jam them into these suitcases <laughs> and you run and you get in the van and you get to the airport and uh, but and then you rush to the gate and then you're in Los Angeles. Yeah, that's and true. people are like, We're, what about your shopping trip? And you're like, there's no there's time. No. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We'll have to go to a close up of my. Do I? How do I get a close up? Yeah, just right. Yeah, that camera right there. Trotsky, look at that. Look at that. There's Leon Trotsky right there. You got this wall. Very nice. At the airport. See, there's my. Look at that. Medal. Look at that. Got that at the Trotsky Museum. There you museum. go, kids. You see, Trotsky. <laughs> after Lenin died, Trotsky. It was Trotsky versus Stalin. Who won that one? Yeah, don't screw with Stalin. Trotsky gets the boot. He goes to Mexico. Stalin says, "Kill him." They get him with a nice pick, 1840. <laughs> but you knew that. <laughs> Speaking of, people always wonder what it's like to be in these trips, and I do remember a, a distinct moment where Conan gave us all like a 20-minute lecture of Trotsky getting stabbed in the head with an ice mm -hmm. pick on the way from he one place to another. It was just... <laughs> it, right, exa yeah, exactly. It's important to me that we uh, make these shows, but also that I get a chance <laughs> to babble about history. Exactly. Actually, uh, one, one thing for people uh, that didn't actually make the show or really any behind the scenes was that Bieber was staying in our hotel. Yeah. Justin. Yes. Justin Bieber. And so every time we would pull in, there'd be just screaming girls and they would all think that well, we were, were Bieber. Conan. They were there yes. for Conan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There actually, to be fair, there'd be like 800 screaming girls for Bieber and then two <laughs> girls for me <laughs> that wanted to talk about Trotsky. Right. So I have my people. Yes, exactly. Um, Actually, yeah. uh, Absolute Bullocks asked from Twitch, asks, uh, what, what happened with the dental emergency? Oh, oh. that's after the, the wrestling. Yeah. We go out to dinner after the wrestling. Yes. And I literally bite into a piece of bread and I'm sitting next to Andy talking to him and all of a sudden I feel something and I reach into my mouth and I pull out... <laughs> 
a tooth, and it was just the cap, the crown, but it was in the back tooth, and it had popped off, I think, during the wrestling. People are horrified, by the way, in the room. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, and oh my God. Andy said, man, I hope it's your tooth. <laughs> and then we were picturing the waiter coming up and saying, how's your meal? And smiling, and him missing a big tooth right there. I pre-chewed your bread. <laughs> But what happened was I wouldn't I wouldn't have paid attention to it except that with the cap off there's just nerve. Uh, so when I would take a sip of even lukewarm water, it was like a pain that went right up through my head. Oh man. So I knew I had to get this thing popped back on. Fortunately, Jeff Ross uh, knows everybody. In any city we're in, Jeff is hooked up with some people. <laughs> and Jeff had some friends that night who I ran into. I see Jeff and I was like, Oh, my tooth popped out and he was like I got my friends here. Guys, what do we do? <laughs> and Jeff's, you know, Jeff's the only one eating chicken noodle soup in Mexico City. Uh, and he's just like, guys, what do we do? And they were like, you know, you go to this doctor. He's the best doc He's the best dentist in uh, in Mexico City. Here's his number. We'll set it up. We'll drive you over there. So they, these people took wonderful care of me. That's awesome. And the dentist was amazing. I, I, he was, he was great. His dental, his office was, had this great view of Mexico City. Uh, he was really funny. And he, he put some glue in that thing and snapped it right back on, and we took you a picture. You have a new dentist. Yeah. Uh, Eric from YouTube asks, would you, uh, can we get you on WrestleMania? Would you go on WrestleMania? Ooh. Oh. That'd be yeah. interesting. I thought it, WWE? Before. Yeah, try, done, that's done, trouble. Done Little WrestleMania? Maybe if Can I could go on finish? as the rooster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, would be, that, that would be a good yeah. crossover. If I could go on with Andy as the, you know, Andy and I could <laughs> go as yeah. and, and, and represent Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm sure Mexico does not want us <laughs> representing them in any capacity. <laughs> right, right. But I'm just saying the offer's there. Right. That would be more interesting to me as a, as a, <laughs> as a way to bring our uh, two nations closer together. I think Andy and I should go as the luchadores. That would be unbelievable. Uh, uh, well, it can't guys, make things worse. What's that? What'd you say? It makes oh, things it worse. It can't make things any worse. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're almost out of time, so get your last questions in, and and I, I think maybe we'll just start kind of the final questions. Uh, the question we get the most when we do this live Q and A is, where are you going next? And mm -hmm. I, I think we don't really know, but I'll start with Frank. Where would you like to see us go? Gosh, well, uh, the obvious one is Jordan in Italy. That's an obvious one, <laughs> That's because obvious that one. would be uh, magical. But also, yes. uh, I know we, you and Conan did a little remote in Ireland. I, th I, I think that would be a great... Back at late night. A yeah. great thing. Yeah, to Ireland would be... Uh, explore Ireland. Mm -hmm. I hope Trump attacks the Seychelles Islands um, <laughs> verbally. Yeah, I'd like to spend... Excuse to spend a week there. Beautiful beaches. Yeah. yeah. And you're hoping those people at yeah. the... <laughs> At the resorts, we're hoping, themselves. yeah, we're hoping that, yeah, Trump uh, launches a verbal attack on Saint Kitts, right. <laughs> <laughs> Martinis, <laughs> Barbados, right, yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. and and uh, that it, you know, as a way of healing uh, the wounds, yeah, yeah. I have to go stay at a five-star resort and spa. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's, I mean, the list is endless of places where we'd like to go. What is true is we put so much focus into making these, and and as you can see right now, in this digital age, uh, it doesn't end with putting the show up on TBS at ten. A lot of you are going to see it online, and we hope you see it. So we're still committed to this Mexico show and making yes. sure that it's seen and that the message gets across how lovely and, and talented and vivacious these people are and how incredible their culture is. That's what we want. We think about that so much that we don't even get a chance to think about what's the next place that we're going. But we also love suggestions. Yeah. So <sighs> suggestions are good. And you Enjoy guys it. might have an idea that uh, we haven't we're not thinking of that would be perfect so feel free to let us know if there's a place you think we should go absolutely uh and i think maybe we'll just un end on this question kind of for everybody uh ufinito from youtube asks was there anything in particular from the mexican culture that you actually didn't expect and what did you uh what really surprised you what did you love the most yes. yeah i mean i th i i felt like as we were talking to mexicans about trump and about the wall what i the sense i got for a lot of them, they were like, yeah, we've been dealing with not either not, you know, agreeing with our president or having issues with our government for a long time. And so they were very right. empathetic to us mm -hmm. in that sense. It was right. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't really like their they don't like their current president. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you don't like Trump. 
Oh, I'm, I mean, I don't want to get political. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, and so for me, that that really came across where they thought, yeah, we have complicated politics too, and right. we're very used to this feeling of, you know, of, of there being political turmoil. So we understand that uh, we can separate Americans from the policies of their government. Right. Well, That's interesting. What uh, they were so appreciative of the fact that we came, and that was really moving to all of mm -hmm. us, I think. But uh, we're our fixer, and she was everything for us. She explained what a producer fixer is. Producer. Yeah. She's Mar our Mar local producer. Mar Mar she Mar is our was uh, really <coughs> couldn't have done this show without Maritza Carbajal, and she said that she never gets moved, but she was brought to tears by the end of it all because of what it meant to her. There yeah, was an immediate was understanding of what it is we were trying to do, and then the Mexican people made it happen. So yeah. that's, uh, you know, they say it, it takes two to tango. You need, it's, there's our effort, and I'm not putting our effort down, but it was the chemistry of us going down there, and then the Mexican people are the ones that that took our effort and like slam dunked it yeah. with enthusiasm and graciousness and incredibly uh, they're, they're such good humor and goodwill and like I said they were terrific improv partners and they really made the show special and that was the goal from day one which is um, make them the star, you know, and I'll happily be the bungling clown, yeah. but the, the emphasis should be on them. And I thought the, the guests, Diego Luna and President Vicente Fox were, were, were different in their approaches, but they, they were terrific guests and funny, but yeah. also really eloquent about how the Mexican people feel. And I, you could feel it in the studio audience. The studio audience was so, uh, uh, it was so gratifying for them to have these people mm -hmm. who are respected and known speak up yeah. on their behalf mm -hmm. and represent Mexico accurately that that feeling, I think, charged the whole trip and made it a special kind of happening. I, I was impressed by all the strangers we talked to and then all the people in the studio that were knew, knew the project and were helping us across the board incredibly warm and friendly and, and kind of just full of love and mm -hmm. uh, all I want to do is go back to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's it's really, really, you know what's been nice <laughs> too? Everyone was amazing, I've only been amazing. back, yeah. we've only been back a couple of days and I went over to CNN the other day and to tape a thing uh, with Jake Tapper via satellite to promote this show uh, that I think uh, aired yesterday and uh, Mexican people were coming out while I was just walking from my car into CNN. Oh my gosh. And they were talking about how, oh my God, the, the clip, you know, about the wall and this and that. And that's the part that gets me the most excited at this point is making friends and connections with people. You know, there's plenty of people in America who have whether grown up with me and we really love our fans and we put a lot of work into this and we appreciate them. I totally get it if there are other people that are like, oh my God, he's been on since I was a kid. I'm sick of that guy. You know, <laughs> I would understand that. It's really nice to connect with these people uh, who I wouldn't have connected with otherwise. Yeah. And I just have these great conversations. That's what I'm looking forward to now is I live in Los Angeles. So, you know, I'm looking forward to Mexicans that live in Los Angeles coming up to me and saying, oh man, you're the worst luchador I've ever seen, <laughs> or uh, you're terrible at, at football, shorts are so high. you know, whatever, yeah, yeah those shorts, <laughs> man, way too high, I'm looking, you know, the quinceanera, yeah. I had one, you know, that's weird, you're a man, uh, <laughs> I'm just looking forward to that, that's the part that on a visceral level feels great. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, again, the Reddit AMA you did yesterday, it was very cool to see the, the uprising of support and people coming out of the woodwork just to write these huge oh, things that about letter much, that, uh, oh my gosh they showed me a letter this morning that someone I don't know you may yeah, that, yeah that somebody wrote yeah and just like someone thank wrote you this beautiful nice, letter that nice. made yeah. single I mean in one sh very short concise letter made was a huge boost to all of us like yeah. it made it all worthwhile I mean it, it, we knew that already but that was just beautiful that was great absolutely and that, that 
echoes the response we got while we were there verbally from everyone. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. I think we're all out of time. Thank you for your questions. Again, you can see the entire uh, Conan Made in Mexico show at teamcoco.com slash Mexico, along with tons of behind the scenes uh, footage, outtakes, Wounds. uncover modes. Oh, and also yes. just Wounds a quick note bites. to throw in there. Yes, dog bites. Uh, yeah. I'm not being told to say this, uh, but go to Mexico City. Yes. They have, I think, more museums Yes. Uh, they have something like yeah. 600 and some odd museums. Well, the, fo the food is absolutely insane. Uh, the culture, the people. Uh, I just going there and making the show made me want to take my family, go yeah. back and and really get into that Frida Kahlo museum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kick me out of and get back to Trotsky. <laughs> but go to Mexico City. I, yes. I can't. It is an absolutely fantastic destination for like if you've got a week or even if you've got a couple of days, get there. Cool. It's easy to get to. Too. It, yeah, yeah, it's very yeah. Yeah, very close. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.